Good morning and welcome back to the lecture series on narrative mode and fiction. We are discussing the short story and novel, a comparative understanding of these two genres. So, uh, we will begin with uh, Rust Hills and uh, his understanding of the key features of a short story. Uh, according to short, according to Rust Hills, the short story tells us about something that happened to someone which makes it different from the sketch. So, we have to understand that we also have a very similar form to short story which is the sketch. However, short story and the sketch uh, unlike what many readers uh, fathom are not quite the same. So, the sketch comprises the description of a character. The described character remains constant throughout the sketch. Uh, so, the description is meant to illustrate rather than develop a character in a sketch. Uh, so, a sketch in other words is an example of a character's behavior and not an account of incidents that uh, move or alter the character's position. In a short story, the plot is moving, it is not static, it is a dynamic plot and the characters are moved from their original position, from the way they are, the way they think from the beginning to the end, a journey, uh, albeit a short one has taken place. So, the character on whom the story leaves uh, consequences is the moved character. At the end of the narration, his or her position uh, will shift emotionally, socially or in any other way. So, more than most of other forms, a short story maintains a harmonious relationship of all its aspects. And this, however, is not a characteristic of a good novel. A good novel is expected to function based on minimal uh, description and uh, leave a lot of uh, uh, open ends uh, to be uh, filled up, to be uh, imagined uh, and recreated uh, through uh, the reader's creativity, creative reading, right? And then while the development of character in short story is similar to the novel, we see that the novel has time and space for a number of effects, artistic effects, uh, let us say through subplots uh, and so the novel can experiment with stylistic devices and narrative style. This entire scope of uh, becoming, of developing is not available. Uh, in the case of the short story, right? Uh, so, the short story uh, is driven by an inherent paradoxical situation. To restrict uh, itself to limited dimensions of time that the genre entails and yet to convey uh, an atemporal theme through the plot a theme that transcends the bounds of time and temporality. Uh, I would quickly before proceeding go through the basic premises that uh, Rust Hills proposes as key features of the short story. One is uh, that unlike the sketch, the short story uh, also uh, looks at the development of a character. The characters are moving through the plot, it is not only uh, the description, a static description that uh, the sketch is all about and then the, the harmonious relationship of all aspects where uh, the, the whole emerges even before the parts. Then he also talks about the greater scope of uh, playing with the stylistic devices that the novel has uh, which the short story lacks. The short story writer does not elaborate uh, or rather cannot elaborate the secondary characters and does not mess too much with the uh, subplots because messing too much would mean he or she cannot uh, restore these subplots or the secondary characters within the limited time and space. 
Due to this same reason, the short story does not have too much scope to play around with perspectives. Usually, there is a, a single point of view to retain focus on the plot. Short stories usually focus on one problem only. That's the maximum one can resolve within the uh, within the bounds of the short story. Uh, you know, getting into the heart of one problem and trying to deal with that. Uh, in terms of language, multiple use of uh, sounds and words uh, make the short story uh, comparable with uh, lyric poetry. So, like uh, in T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound's poetry, there are intricate systems of poetic metaphor and imageries, uh, uh, you know, from uh, drawn from fable, myth, and fairy tales, which uh, inform the short story. And uh, this, these uh, poetic metaphors and influences from folk tales, from ballads, myths, uh, to the extent that uh, some of the short stories can actually be read as an extended poem. A language of a short story, apart from fulfilling the need of narration, also promptly connects with uh, the theme, mood, and action. So, all of these aspects need to be bound together the theme of the short story, its mood, its actions, and language becomes vital in setting up the author's tone and style, which in turn contributes to the characterization and the point of view of the short story. Uh, in a typical successful short story, all the different aspects, uh, you know, the tonality, uh, the, the actions, the theme, uh, the characters, all of them should work in tandem and each feature, each aspect should enhance and uh, interrelate with the other feature. Short story should re reflect an inseparable and synchronized composed economy thereby. So, Claire Hansen notes that short story as a form mediates between the lyric and the novel. It has in parts qualities, uh, you know, features of the lyric and then that of the novel too. And yet, uh, through experimentation, one also sees uh, that short story is coming up with uh, new, uh, new, new genres, new possibilities, uh, new avatars, if we may. Uh, that is when short stories are created uh, through uh, interacting with essay, with letter, cinema, photography, painting, and visual arts. Critics note that short story has split allegiance to the narrative and the lyric. For short story to progress, there has to be a disruption from regular, familiar, everyday encounters, and so there has to be a breakaway from the routine, from the premeditated uh, kind of pre-programmed actions, fixed actions. The, 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 the extraordinary, the oddity, the, the, uh, the paranormal, all these uh, traits uh, uh, constitute uh, the, the plot, the torque for the short story, right? The shock the jolt make up the uh, propelling force for the short story. While the fixed action enhances characterization, an incident that leads to a breakaway from fixed action introduces the potential plot for the short story. The disruption from the normal, the routine, the everyday elicits uh, actions from the characters, uh, something that is one-off, that is spontaneous, a non-repetitive, non-regular, uh, an action that is unfamiliar thereby, which uh, drives the plot forward. So, fixed actions are a preliminary part. It sets the stage for the short story, the background of the short story, even before the short story has begun. If 
it is a story. Once it enters within the premises of the story, it has to cut off from the mundane. If we can understand how a narrative happens uh, through the lens of different uh, structuralist thinkers. So, for example, Algirdas uh, Julian Reimers notes that the perception of oppositions of any form of conflict uh, followed by resolution or sometimes uh, not followed by resolution underlies the structure of any signification, any meaning that a narrative tries to posit, tries to hold. Meaning in a narrative takes shape through the reader's perception of these uh, conflicts, these differences. And so the structure, uh, Rhymus is talking about uh, something that he terms as the enunciation spectacle, the structure of the enunciation spectacle, which is the fundamental structure of language or grammar. And, and this remains the same uh, for all the stories, for, for any form of narration. The manifestation, the performance of this enunciation spectacle changes uh, depending on the actants or the different themes embodying and performing it. This is uh, very similar to Lang's relation with parole, uh, where all stories are, you know, springing from the same grammar, just like uh, paroles are individual dialects, individual performance of the self same uh, lung. Here we see that enunciation spectacle is like the common repository and the different actants and themes, uh, the stock characters, it could be a motif that keeps coming back, a motif that manifests through different characters and it is the individual performance of uh, the enunciation spectacle which still remains the same for, for all types of narrations. Uh, across time and space. This is what uh, Rhymus has to say. Similarly, Tizervet and Todorov points out that any narrative comprises a series of propositions or events. That holds true regardless of uh, whether we are talking about uh, the epic, the novel, the short story. This, this uh, holds true both of what, uh, you know, uh, what, what both Rhymus and uh, Todorov say hold uh, true for all the genres, right? So, Todorov talks about uh, propositions or events uh, that could be related uh, uh, to each other in, in terms of time, so temporally, um, spatially or logically and then how is one proposition made? Each proposition is a combination of a noun, meaning a character, with either uh, uh, either an adjective or a verb. So the character has a certain attribute, or the character does something, an action of the character. This is what uh, constitutes an event, and a series of such events. Uh, centering time, space or causality makes up any narration, right? This is what Tizidwit and Todorov has to say. According to John Gerlach, there can be a number of narrative closural categories for short stories. Uh, one of the ways of closing a short story could be through solution uh, of the central problem, which is the most common way of uh, concluding. And this uh, trait of, uh, you know, tying the loose end is uh, typical and unique to short story that does not always happen in novels. In novels, like I have already said, um, there can be certain open ends, right, certain problems that are not resolved till the end. So, uh, going back to Gerlach's different closure categories. The first one, solution of the central problem, either a goal is achieved or if unachievable, a certain completion, coherence or stability is attained towards the end. Next, Gerlach talks about the, the second possibility of closure, which is natural termination of the story, uh, meaning that a completion of an action takes place uh, with a predictable end. 
Next is completion of antithesis. So, the story ends with an opposition often characterized by irony which may indicate polarized extremities on a given subject or circularity by returning to an aspect mentioned at the beginning through verbal or situational echo. Right? Uh, so, uh, the entire story uh, tries to posit a thesis, tries to uh, 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 shape a thesis and the end uh, is an opposition. It is a subversion of that entire thesis. So, uh, the, the, the story uh, the story is formed through uh, polarized ex extremities on a given subject where uh, the subject was being dealt with uh, from a certain angle till a different angle was adopted in the end. Or there could be a circularity where the narrator or the author returns to the self same aspect that was mentioned at the very beginning or through verbal or situational echo. Then we have manifestation of a moral. This is another possibility of closing the short story through manifestation of a moral. It draws on the genre of parable where an example is set at the end, a lesson is taught, it, is, it has a didactic purpose. A theme emerges towards the end whose effect is similar uh, to the moral in the exemplum tradition. And Gerlach is talking about one more possibility for ending the short story which is through encapsulation. Uh, Encapsulation meaning that uh, the story has a concluding passage that distances the reader uh, either by altering the point of view or through summarizing a passage of time. So, some time has elapsed since the core problem of the plot occurred. And this, uh, through this summarizing or through uh, telling us in the end that some time has elapsed, the, there is a kind of relief which enables the uh, reader to distance herself from the uh, core plot. Uh, these uh, closural strategies uh, can also be applied, uh, these closural signals or strategies can also be uh, applied they can also occur in poems, in novels and in drama. So, as a shorter fiction closure of a short story is structurally very important to it. In approaching a character from the position of a short story writer, one can treat the character uh, either as an individual or as a subject. So, there can be two ways of looking at the characters of a given short story. One could look at them as an individual in their individual capacity through their ordinary acts or uh, as a symbol what they stand for. There is a larger meaning uh, associated with them and where their ordinary uh, acts become less important. Uh, an overriding meaning uh, is something that needs to uh, that, that informs the short story. So, the realistic approach, the individual approach looks at a short story in the context of its similarity with the real world. This is the, like I said the realistic approach. And then the other approach which is also something I have mentioned just now, it is to treat the structure of the story plot as a scheme or a code, story as a code that needs to be decoded right that needs to be deciphered and here the characters are not in their individual capacities but as archetypes and they are there by virtue of the position that they hold in the larger schema. This reading is called the allegorical or metaphorical approach. Peter Brooks uh, however says that the metaphor that lies in eventual totalization and which is understood only in retrospect uh, draws meaning from 
as well as lends meaning to the realist sequence of events. So, in other words, the metaphoric and the realistic aspects reflect on uh, one another. We begin our readings generally through the realistic approach where characters are individuals. Still, we have uh, journeyed to a certain point in the story and we realize that the characters represent and stand for uh, some larger concepts and that goes also the realistic reading goes on to become a metaphorical uh, reading uh, when once we start deciphering this code this scheme uh, uh, through our journey with the narrator right um, and and this this second uh, style of reading this second uh, mode of uh, reading or analysis uh, generally comes in hindsight, in retrospect. Uh, owing to its shortness of form, short story lacks a social framework and it, it uh, draws greatly on its provenance in myth and, and focuses on uh, a basic sense of mystery, mystery, uh, paranormal, uh, bizarre, odd uh, uh, and, and uh, extraordinary, right? According to Robert Langbaum, uh, the author's endless introspection of who am I, this is also an introspection, an existential, existential question that uh, prods the novelist. Uh, and this question, the short story writer's question of who am I is answered through uh, the author donning a mask and stepping into the story within the frame of the story where at the level of experience events uh, eventually fall into a pattern and the author's will in the due course is uh, unraveled and objectified. So, in other words, through the making of the story, the author is answering to this existential question of who I am maybe Garb as one of the characters, the author's will is eventually revealed. So, the question of epiphany, the revelation, the realization, the realization of the characters within the bounds, within the frame of the story is not only a fictional realization, it could also be the author's realization in her real life. Uh, through the necessity of the story, the author discovers uh, his or her identity and what he or she aspires for, uh, something that has uh, re hitherto remained besides the conscious state of mind. The practice of writing, it is therapeutic and it is a way of disintering the unconscious, the unconscious desire and aspirations of the uh, right. So, in the schematic uh, conventionalized structure of short story, the character becomes an automaton like figure uh, who serves his or her place in the larger uh, schema. This is the conventional structure of short story. Uh, the allegorical character having a code bound nature is driven by uh, a given central obsession. The only way to approach an allegorical character is through referencing to its position in and as a pre-existing code. So, unless we read the character, some of the stories entail this reading where individual reading does not, uh, uh, you know, does not uh, make too much of meaning. It does not make a lot of sense unless we read the characters as uh, symbols, as standing for uh, uh, something else, a larger uh, concept, for example. Uh, so, characters as code, the story as a, a, a scheme and uh, such characters, such plots defy realist, realistic analysis. When realistically analyzed, the obsession of the character is explored uh, without, right? Uh, so, when we are doing the realistic analysis, we are uh, studying the characters uh, from 
or on the outside whereas allegorical characters uh, analysis entail you know uh, looking uh, at their inner journey their inner universe when these allegorical narratives are written the source of obsession is positioned uh, inside of the character's psyche so the possibility of this obsession lies within and cannot be identified through the external behavior uh, example is edgar allan poe's writing so poe's focus is on the perverse neurotic side of the human nature uh, his characters are mostly obsessive compulsive um, they have their own uh, psychosis their own uh, quirks um, and and this behavior that they posit that they betray uh, is beyond any common sense any reason rationality and uh, can even flout their own best interests the best interest of their own survival right um, such mysterious obsessive characters that can be best read through the allegorical lens of reading uh, are found in nathaniel hawthorne's uh, wakefield young goodman brown uh, and then melville's bartleby of course uh, cortazar's axolotl and so forth uh, such an allegorical character as i mentioned uh, flows out of social historical and cultural contexts they cannot be contained uh, uh within the parameters of real coordinates cannot uh, hold them uh, amply sufficiently they constantly flow out of the social historical and cultural contexts rather than a character that is obsessed uh, in, in in these cases they are themselves an epitome of obsession they are not a character obsessed but an epitome of obsession in a short story the different components are tied to each other through an inseparable web in which one component has no reality uh, when decoupled from the entirety the entire organization the reader can grasp comprehensively only when understanding this uh, this organized whole this entirety so unity of effect techniques of plot compression lyricism are some of the defining uh, features of short stories so according to thomas gallison the unity of effect that poe emphasizes uh, comes from two things according to gallison these two things are distillation and telescoping so what are these things that you know uh, render unity to the short story distillation refers to the reader's skill of reading the metaphorical and archetypal meanings but distillation also means steering clear of uh, unnecessary de- you know unnecessary details steering clear of unnecessary details uh, uh, too many subplots that cannot be uh, justified within the frame of a short story so a distilled short story Uh, shows the uh, design shows the pattern uh, in a clearer in a more distinct fashion and then telescoping telescoping referring to focusing on where focus needs to be the necessary details so these two uh, features actually speak to each other only when we are distilling uh, we are uh, getting rid of the extraneous the unnecessary information that can remain undiscussed that can be avoided uh, one uh, arrives at telescoping at focusing uh, at the right uh, spot uh, of the story the story has slots where various elements may be inserted these slots and elements uh, maintain a perceivable coherence in their interrelationships so a successful story to conclude this entire discussion uh, we can summarize that a 
successful story is complete uh, such that any addition or omission would destroy its aesthetic uh, wholeness, its inner organization and thereby its narrative harmony. Due to fewer uh, narrative elements and structural plots, in the modern short story, the impressionist components are more visible. So, this is also something that harkens back Kundira's notion of the apodictic message. The message, uh, you know, are our glimpse at the soul of the, uh, the heart of the short story at once. So, that is the impression that is formed at once, not by and by, not through and through, eventually, but it is there and uh, there throughout, right? So, the apodictic message where, uh, and this happens through brevity, a practice of uh, uh, restraining oneself as an author in the position of author from giving too much description from, uh, you know, uh, bringing in too many characters and subplots. So, that tends to uh, blur our vision, take us away from the apodictic message, the, the pith, the core of uh, the narrative. So, in order for that to be there at once, uh, the narrative has to be paired off, there has to be a minimal treatment. Uh, impressionist movement, we, as we know, is a tradition whose forerunner was Flaubert himself and defined uh, fiction in the late 19th century and early 20th century. We are talking about uh, uh, the way we see an impression as a complete uh, form in itself and there at once. This is also something uh, that is uh, uh, understood as desirable in the modern short story. Ernst Kassirer describes the short story's uh, singleness of effect as, I quote Kassirer, the isolated occurrence of an impression, its separation from the totality of ordinary commonplace experience producing not only a tremendous intensification, but also the highest degree of condensation. Here also we are getting two words, one is intensification and the other is condensation, they speak to each other. And, and so, how strongly we can drive home the central message? That is possible only when we get rid of the extraneous, something that can be gotten rid of. So, the short story does not take up any extra burden that it cannot uh, uh, justify, that it cannot do justice with. Uh, with this, I am going to uh, conclude today's lecture and let us meet again with another round of discussions in uh, our following lectures. Thank you.